In this tutorial, we are going to use DeepTrack for cell counting. Hello, I'm Jesus, and I'll be your guide for this tutorial. Let's go through example six, where we use DeepTrack to train a unit network for cell counting. First, we import the packages needed for this example, and we load the database we will analyze later with DeepTrack. Additionally, we specify the size of the images the network will be trained for. In this example, the training dataset consists of synthetic data generated by imaging cell-like objects through a simulated fluorescent microscope with numerical aperture between 0.9 and 1.1 and illuminating laser wavelength of 400 nanometers. We also define the resolution and magnification of the microscope. We simulate the cells as random ellipses. The radius of the particles are defined in terms of the Dummy properties, area, and ratio. Then we define the particle position in pixel units. The cells are also given an intensity and rotation. And the number of cells is set randomly between 1 and 20 per image. We apply elastic transformation to the ellipses to make them look like real cells. However, first we pad the ellipses to ensure the transformation has enough space to grow into. The internal structure of the cells is simulated as poison noise with a signal to noise ratio between 1.5 and 3. Also, we apply a 3D average smoking filter to the cells a random number of times between 0 and 3. Doing this allows us to generate cells with different internal textures, some smoother than others, which resemble the experimental conditions. Now we need to generate labels for training. To do this, first we define the getMask function, which computes the centroid of each cell and assigns a 1 to the nearest pixel. To create the masks, we use the sample to mask feature. The input to this method is the get mask function. Note that we use a smirch method, the option add, which adds the mask together. Then we convolve the generated mask with a Gaussian filter. This way, we represent each cell by a Gaussian curve. Now, we image the cells as seen through the fluorescent microscope we previously defined. The noise of the images is simulated as random Gaussian noise with mean between 0 and 1.5 and a standard deviation of 0 0.04. In experimental images, we have pixel intensity saturated regions. To simulate this, we clip the images within a minimum and maximum value. This range, of course, depends on your specific application. And finally, the images are normalized. Note that we use random normalization limits. We found that doing this helps the network to generalize better with images of different sizes. Then, we combine the cell images and Gaussian labels into a single database and apply some augmentation to the images including left, right, up, down, and diagonal flipping. Now, we define the validation set. We will test the network and experimental data. First, let's define the path to the experimental database. Originally, this data set is divided into training, validation, and test images. Since we are training the network using synthetic data, we merge training and validation images into a single validation set that we will use to monitor the performance of the network during training. Then we will evaluate the train model using the test set. Next, we define a cyclic iterator to iterate over the validation files. To read the images, we use the load image feature. The input to this method is the path to the image to load. Note that the path to the validation cell images has the file name 
set to the iterator we defined. However, for the mask, file name points to validation image dot file name. This way, we ensure that we are reading the correct part of images. We do the same for the test set. The labels in this database are color-coded segmentations. Therefore, we need a feature that converts this mask into Gaussian labels. Using the decode mask feature, we compute the centroid of each labeled image region, and as previously, we assign one to the nearest pixel. Finally, we apply the make Gaussian feature. We apply this pipeline to the validation masks and normalize the cell's images between 0 and 1. Finally, we combine the normalized cell images and Gaussian labels into a single database. We do exactly the same for the test set. We also make sure that these images are multiple of 16, which is needed by units. Next, we define these two functions to retrieve the images and labels from the combined dataset. Let's visualize some image examples and their corresponding labels. For training, these are synthetic cell images. And validation. In this example, we train a unit model. We compile the network using the mean absolute error loss function. Also, the network minimizes the difference in mean between the ground truths and the predictions. We give more weight to the mean absolute error loss. We use Atom as optimizer. Here we see the model summary. Now it's time for training. We use a continuous generator to train the network. We also define the validation set and train the network for 1000 epochs. We monitor the performance of the network based on the validation set using a nearly stopping callback with patient of 50 epochs. Note we set the restore best weights argument to true. This means that we restore the model weights from the epoch with the best value and validation. After the training is completed, we can visualize the training and validation loss. Now, we evaluate the trained network using the test dataset. Here we show the cell images and the prediction of the neural network.